Hey guys, Tyler Berger here with Bass Fishing HQ. You know, I have fished on a lot of different lakes, a lot of different types of lakes all over the nation. I have fished natural lakes, I have fished reservoirs, I have fished rivers, tidal rivers, ponds, and I have fished in Ohio, New York, Pennsylvania, Virginia, West Virginia, Alabama, Mississippi, North Carolina, South Carolina, Florida. I have fished a lot of different types of lakes. The biggest thing that we wanna do as fishermen is go out there and catch fish. We wanna launch our boat, we want to get out on the water and we want to start catching fish and we want to be able to find bass fast. But I think a lot of guys kind of go about this the wrong way. And I'm not saying that I'm an expert in this. I have a system that kind of works for me. I've been able to do pretty well in some Bassmaster Opens and some higher level tournaments. And I use the same system anytime I go out fishing, whether it's a, a man-made lake, whether it's a natural lake, whatever it may be, even if it's your local pond that you're trying to fish, you can apply this same type of strategy to it and be able to find bass fast. So what I have found by fishing a lot of different bodies of water is that it's better to be in the right area throwing the wrong bait than throwing the right bait in the wrong area. What I'm saying that is a big part of bass fishing is simply where you are fishing. A lot of times I think guys go out, they might be fishing the right bait. They might be fishing the right bait for those conditions, but they're simply in the wrong area. They're not in an area where bass are. And so they get frustrated because they think, hey, I I'm doing what the guys tell me to do on TV. Maybe they're throwing a spinner bait and they've got some wind and they know that a spinner bait can work really well in windy conditions, but they're not catching a fish. So they get frustrated because of that. But again, it's because they're in the wrong area. Not every lake is just filled with bass. Not every lake is there just bass on every single corner. Some lakes are like that. Some lakes you get to and there's bass literally everywhere, but not every lake is like that. So you have to be able to find bass. So today I really wanna talk about that in my system for finding bass extremely quick. Now guys, the first part to finding bass quick is really understanding understanding a bass's seasonal behavior, where they go during the spring, where they go during the summer, the fall, and the winter. And that's really kind of a different video for a different day. And if you guys actually want to look at some of the videos that I have on my channel, I actually have some complete guides on where to look for bass in those different seasons. They have patterns that they follow. Bass aren't always going to be in the back of a pocket in the middle of summer or in the middle of winter. So you might just be wasting time fishing areas that you really shouldn't be. So understanding a bass's behavior, what they do, where they like to go is extremely important. So you can check out the videos that I have on that on my channel, but this video is actually more about the process, what you do once you get to some of those areas to actually start catching fish, what lures to throw, how to cover water effectively and efficiently. All right, guys, we've made it to the first little area that I'm wanting to fish. And the first part of the process Process is actually fishing fast. You want to be able to cover a tremendous amount of water. I'm trying to find a group of fish out here. I'm trying to find an area that's holding a lot of bass. Now, if you guys look at some of the best bass fishermen in the world, the Brian Thrifts of the world, the Jacob Wheelers of the world, Kevin Van Dam of the world, these guys fish extremely fast. And if you really think about it, they might just cover more water than other anglers and they're able to find maybe one or two areas that have a population of bass in them. And that's what makes them do so well in tournaments is because they're able to efficiently cover a lot of water. So when you get to the lake, you want to keep that trolling motor up on high. Maybe you're a bank fisherman. If you're a bank fisherman, you just want to start walking the bank and, and literally just keep moving, make one cast in an area and move on make another cast and move on. That's how you cover a lot of water. And this is what I'm looking for, guys. I'm looking for one bite. That is all I'm looking for. A lot of times, the best way to do that is with fast moving horizontal lures. You know, right now I'm using a top water. A top water is one of the best baits to cover water with. One of the best things about a top water is it has drawing power, right? It can draw fish from 15 feet away. So even though I'm casting straight out, I might be covering the water that's 15 feet to the side of me, 15 feet to this side of me, and even 15 feet down. I make one cast and I'm actually covering maybe 20, maybe 30 foot wide. So that's why I can make a cast here, make another cast over there. You're trying to fish 
fast. The top water is a great bait to use, but you can't always use a top water because the fish aren't always feeding on top. So other baits that I really like to use are things like a jerk bait. You know, that's a great bait. Uh, a chatter bait. Anytime I'm fishing around a lot of grass, a chatter bait is a great bait. A spinner bait. A spinner bait is probably one of the best baits to use during the springtime. Now, if you're fishing deep, a deep diving crankbait, something that's pretty fast, it can also be something like a wobble head or a swing head. You know, that's another bait that I can cover a tremendous amount of water with. The biggest part of this whole concept is I'm looking for one bite. Now, I don't want to have the misconception that the way to fish fast is only with the horizontal lure. You can fish fast with a soft plastic bait like a Texas rig or even with a jig. For instance, here I've got several laydowns and yeah, I could fish a topwater over them, but maybe the fish are just down in the laydown where it's better to use a soft plastic. I'm still gonna fish these things very fast and I'm just trying to hit the high percentage areas. So I'm fishing fast and I'm literally just pitching in that area, making a few small hops and then working it out, okay? I'm not wasting time hitting every single nook and cranny. I'm just trying to cover what I would consider the high percentage areas and move on. I'm just looking for one bite. Another thing that is extremely important to know is that when you're covering a lot of water pretty fast, you're going to miss a couple of bass. You're going to skip over a couple of bass. That's just gonna happen, you know? There might be a fish on one of these laydowns over here that I might miss, and that's fine because if I wanna beat my friend out there fishing, a lot of times I'm looking for a group of fish. All right, guys, if you just saw right there, this is this is the beauty of fishing fast, okay? I just had a fish, didn't even get the bait, right? I didn't even catch the fish, but a fish came up there and literally tried to get this bait like four times. Look, there's another fish right there, just came up. All right. Okay, not a big one at all. But guys, look, this, this is a perfect example of what I'm talking about. I've been fishing fast, I've been trying to cover a ton of water, and I just got bit right there and guys again it was a bite i didn't even catch the fish i didn't even land the fish but what it did tell me is that there's fish possibly in this area for all i know this could be a mega school of fish right here but that one fish is what basically showed me hey there could be fish here when that happens the next step of the equation put the brakes on okay put the brakes on whether that's with the trolling motor whether you have to just sit in that area hit a gps point put your power bolts down put the brakes down you want to now fish this one area where you just got bit very thoroughly okay guys this is the fun part of fishing i've been covering water i haven't caught fish and then bam i got bit and the funny thing was is that i actually i went to swing out and put the brakes on i went to put my spot lock on and another fish kind of like busted out here i pitched out there and caught a little tiny large mouth so i just had a small mouth hit right there i just caught a large mouth right there so guys guess what there's fish probably in this area for a reason now i'm trying to think to myself is this the right lure that I should be fishing you know that fish came up there and missed that bait so maybe I should be fishing a different color maybe I should be fishing a whole different lure altogether. this is where you really start to process what are the fish going to be doing in this area but right now what I want to do is I put the brakes on and I'm just going to start fan casting some of the best areas I have ever found on some lakes came this exact same way i remember fishing on lake champlain i was fishing a frog and i was fishing it pretty fast around boat docks on mats and stuff like that i got bit around this one marina dock and literally i put the brakes on just like i just told you to and i actually instead of use the using a frog i rigged up a weightless texas rig cinco and i started pitching it around this dock and i found a mother load of bass underneath this big marina dock. I mean, guys, there was so many bass around this area. I located that group of fish with a frog, right? But I slowed down with that Texas rig Cinco and really started catching them. 
Just because you put the brakes on doesn't necessarily mean you have to switch your lure up. A lot of times that is what I actually like to do. Instead of using the same bait, I might slow down with a Texas rig or a jig. Maybe it's a Carolina rig, but you don't always have to slow down with a slow lure. What I'm gonna do now is I'm basically gonna fan cast this whole area for about 10 or 15 minutes. If you found a group of fish, you are typically going to catch another fish or get another bite, usually within about 10 or 15 minutes of getting that first bite. If I don't catch a fish in the next 10 or 15 minutes, I'm gonna kick that trolling motor back on high and I'm gonna start covering water again. Did you see that? The very next cast, I had another fish come up there and get that bait and it completely missed it. It wasn't a big bass by any means. I, I now know that there's possibly a group of fish in this area. I just gotta find, am I throwing the right bait? I've had two fish now come up and miss that top water. So this might not be the best bait for me in this situation. All right guys, so I picked up a few different baits here and I'm actually, I've gotten bit like three or four times. But what I'm finding out is that the fish here are just small. If, if you get bit in that area within 10 or 15 minutes, you know that there's probably a lot of fish there. Now, you really have to start gauging the size of the fish. You know, if the fish that I had caught or seen right here were big ones, you know, for this lake, a big one is a two pounder or a three pounder. If they were two and three pounders, then guess what? I may have just found a gold mine of fish. Because these fish are smaller than average fish, I'm going to kick the trolling motor back on high and keep covering water until I find that better average grade of fish. I'm also going to take into consideration exactly what this area is and why it's holding fish. Although these aren't big fish, it may key me into exactly why the fish are here. For instance, basically we have a deep drop here. This water goes from about five and six foot of water all the way down into about 20 or 30 foot. And we have a little bit of a point here. So now I can look on my map. I can start trying to find more areas that set up the exact same way and I can start trying to catch fish using the knowledge that I have learned from just catching these few fish. Now, if these fish had been big ones, okay, what I'm gonna do, if it's in a tournament situation, I'm gonna thoroughly cover this water with everything I can. I'm gonna fish my top water, and I might throw a jerk bait. I might throw different lures to try to catch the fish. The last step of the equation, once you find the fish that you're looking for, is finesse fishing. Finesse fishing is a great way to basically catch everything that's in that area, okay? Because those fish have seen a lot of top waters and, and jerk baits and chatter baits and things like that. So you want to throw some sort of finesse presentation on them to really what I would say clean up. You know, I might come back through now with a drop shot or a wacky rig or a, a shaky head and catch every fish that's in that area, guys. And that's exactly how you find fish and then catch catch the fish once you find them. So you wanna, you wanna locate the fish. You wanna cover a tremendous amount of water. Once you get one bite, put the brakes on, cover that area, pay attention to what that area is, why it's holding fish, and then start experimenting with your lures to try to find the lure that they're gonna bite the best. And the last part is clean up, finesse fish. Catch every fish that's in that area and you're gonna be the best fisherman on your leg. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment below, and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video.